All right, which brings us to the next point of uh, being deliberate and um, living an intentional life. And I call it my MBP. Um, the MBP or the mini business plan, as I call it, and you can name it whatever you want. But I, um, as a business coach, I've coached people on how to create an annual business plan and then a 90 day business plan and a, you know, a business plan down to the week. Um, the, my success, my greatest success has become, has come. And when I say my greatest success, my ability to manifest in my life, the things that I want. So I just want to be clear on my definition of success here. So I'm manifesting the things that I want is that every day I write down on a three by five card because I'm old school, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> he calls that a, a use, lucid chart. I, I use think. a pen um, <laughs> and I write it down on a piece of paper. Oh, and, what uh, is that? Yeah. <laughs> and I write down um, no more than a dozen of the things that must happen today, non-negotiable things. These things must happen. I cannot sit down on the couch. I cannot go to bed. I cannot whatever insert the thing you're looking forward to at the end of the day is put it in there. I cannot do those things until this thing is accomplished. There is no procrastination. There is no, um, there is no waiting. I put the hard things on there first. I need to make a tough phone call to Jared tomorrow. I'm going to make that first thing. I'm going to get it done when my energy is the highest. There's a couple parts to this MVP that I want to go over with you really quickly. It's not a laundry list. It's not a laundry list. Zig Ziglar talks about salespeople or entrepreneurs um, think about at work what they should be doing or what they wish they were doing all day. And then when they're home and they're with their family, with their dog, or they're on their boat, or they're hunting, they're thinking about all the things that they should have done while when, at the office. While they're at the office. And so they're never 100% present. This causes a, um, an ability or an inability to be happy. You're never happy. You're never going to be happy because you're always thinking about what you should have done or what you wished you were doing. Right. The MVP, I write down these 10 to 12 non-negotiable things and I spend a moment before I get in the grind and I visualize my success in each of those. Sometimes I'll have an appointment on there. I'm going on a listing appointment or I'm speaking in front of a group of people or I'm delivering a, um, a sales pitch about Thanksgiving's Heroes to a corporation. I imagine me sitting down in front of the people that are in the corporation and I imagine me explaining to them perfectly how Thanksgiving's Heroes works, why it's important that their company should get involved and the way that they're going to do it. And then I'm going to leave that meeting and we're going to be great friends and we're going to get, give each other big hugs and it's going to be great. I visualize my success in that motion. I visualize my success when I get home when I walk in the door and I'm going to spend time with Annie or whatever the thing is. Professional athletes, when they're walking into the stadium to play basketball and they have their headphones on, do you think they're thinking about what they should have done all day? No, they're thinking about the game. They're seeing themselves win. They're seeing themselves catch that ball, deliver the ball. They're seeing themselves going down mechanically, doing it, doing it, winning. How is it gonna feel when I won? How is it gonna feel when I hold that trophy above my head? I'm going into these appointments and I'm visualizing my success in each and every single one of these movements every day. Now, that might be difficult for you to do because you don't have like, I'm going to get to work and I'm, I do this one thing all day. That might be true. But what are the things that you need to do in order to make that happen at its best? Does this need to be fixed? Does this need to happen? Does this need to go down? Now, as I go down my MVP list, I take a line and I draw it, draw it through that line. I draw it through that event and I do it all day long. And when I get to the end of that list, it's time to be done. I might look for a couple other things to clean up, you know, to get to get ready for tomorrow. I start my MVP for the next day so that I don't take it home with me. And I'm in bed thinking, oh my God, I need to call Alec first thing in the morning. That I'm, I'm going to put it on there. I'm going to get it out of my head so that I can be 100% present at home. Being in the here and being in the now is the only way to find happiness. It's the only way. You can't find happiness in the past. That's called stress, guilt, grief. You can't find happiness in the future. That's called anxiety. Depression it could be all these things. The only thing you can do anything about is right now. And so right now I need to make and have 13 conversations about real estate where I ask one of the three power questions. Right now I need to have that conversation, negotiate that contract. And it could be basic things like go to the gym. Like what do you want? Do you want it? Is, like, is that important to you? I've got to go. I have to exercise today. I have to write in my journal. I have to do the things that are necessary in order for me to be successful. Now I visualize my success down the MVP for the whole day. Does it work out my way? No. But more often than not, it does. More often than not, because I put intention towards it, I put it mm -hmm. out to the universe that this is what I want, and I'm going to show up wearing that character, 
and he's going to be doing his best. I've done the triggers. I'm going to show up, and when I go to that meeting, I'm undeniable. Mm-hmm. I've already seen it happen. They don't even know it yet. They're signing a contract today. They don't even know it. <laughs> it's going to happen. I'm undeniable. And if I can do that throughout the day and I'm living an intentional life, by the time I get to the end of the day, if I have things that continually roll over that aren't getting done, it falls into the three Ds. I either need to do it, delete it because it's not important to me, or delegate it and it might be time for me to hire someone. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And so this is this process of running through every day, running through every day, getting the things done. And this would apply to anyone running any kind of a business. There might be things that need to be getting done that aren't getting done in the business every day. It's, that's an indicator, a key indicator that you're missing someone important on your staff. And so as I'm doing this every single day, now I'm visualizing it, I'm writing it down, I'm getting it out of my brain. At the end of the day, I've drawn a line through every single thing. Now I can go be dad, Rob. I take that piece of paper and I fold it in half and I throw it in the trash. Gone. No more will I think about the things that I had to do today because I've done them. I've visualized my best and I've had, I did my best. I threw my best at it. That's all I can do. And then at the end of the day, I'm ready to go home and I can take the things that are going to haunt me for tomorrow, put me into the future mindset. I put them on the MVP for tomorrow. And so when I'm with Z, man, I'm 100% with Z. That's what I'm going to do. And so I've used this process to get very clear about it. Now there's a book called The One Thing and it talks about that multitasking is a lie, that we can only do one thing at a time, especially us men, we're only good at one thing at a time, one thing at a time. These ladies, man, they could be doing eight things at the same time. The laundry's going, they're cooking dinner, they're helping the kid with the homework, they're doing all of it, you know what I mean? Not this guy. One thing at a time. And so how can I increase my effectivity, my effectiveness above my competition? And that is that um, we're spending a lot of time jumping from my the one thing to the next thing. Okay, I was I was I was doing this one thing and then I had to answer that email. Now what was I doing? I gotta get back to that. Because I have it on my MVP, the non negotiable, most important things that I need to do through the day. Bam, 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 bam. I go down that list and it gives me they estimate twenty percent more time throughout the day because I'm not spending my twenty percent trying to find to go back to where our that last email that I answered. Mm-hmm. I don't answer my emails throughout the day. If it's time for me to be on the phone prospecting that's what I'm doing, and I'm setting a timer for the amount of time that I'm going to be doing that because I'm going to be doing it my very best for 45 minutes. Come hell or high water, the house can be on fire. This is what I'm doing. Do you know what I'm saying? That's... And so I'm, I'm creating in my life time blocking, but not just time blocking, intentional time blocking with the visual of my success in it, and I'm going from one project to the next project much more quickly. And so my competition doesn't stand a chance. Not only am I more intentional in my life, visualizing my success, but I'm also doing it much more effectively. I get more done in my day than any of my competition does. Hmm. That's, oh man. MVP. MVP. I, 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 yeah. I've been struggling with that in the last, call it two months, okay? For those know that I've got some extra, extracurricular uh, stresses I-Y-K, going on. Y-Y-K. Yeah. Uh, but I struggled with that. And, and the biggest thing I struggled with was it we in baseball we called it paralysis by analysis yep. right it just there's so much that has to happen that has to happen it becomes overwhelming and, and therefore you get nothing yeah right and and i've been same thing but getting prepared for the day like your first intentional thing that you do is to get prepared for the day so i'm going to sit down i'm going to read as much as i can for this 30 minute block then I'm going to go and I'm going to switch and I'm going to do editing videos and like my day, but I have to sit down and write it out in the morning. Now the 12 things and, and every, I do kind of a similar process. I didn't know we had a, the mini business plan for the day. That's, that's really good, but that is kind of what I'm doing to overcome that paralysis by analysis. And well, it's let, been, me, let me add into that the intentionality of it. Now I'm going to get on and I'm going to do the best editing I've ever done. I'm going to, I'm going to read more effectively and retain, like take a moment and like, appreciate the opportunity I get to I don't have to I get to and go at it like just fierce just go at it like I, I agree entirely and actually to one one step further that I've added to this I read this book ironically it's been open this whole time but um, it was called make time um, and one of the big things that it focuses on is in light of all of that you've got your tasks and everything to get through and what this book talks about is how that will blend but you throw it away on purpose which I think is Brilliant. You get to throw the, the list away every day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deploy that. But it says really focus on the daily highlight too yeah. and record the daily highlight. Yeah, the win. The win. Yeah. What is that one thing? Because that's the one thing that you'll remember and that's the one thing that you're going to draw that accomplishment 
for the day from. Yeah. You know, there's a book called The Gap and the Gain that you would really appreciate that talks about at the end of the day. Gap and the Gain? The Gap and the Gain. Gap. Um, it talks a lot about at the end of the day taking some time. And I fall asleep thinking about the win. So as I'm going into my REM, I'm thinking about, man, today I, hmm. I crushed that podcast or I, I killed that appointment or I really connected with my wife. Like that one thing. And it's always something different. And it doesn't have to be like significant. Like it didn't change the world, but it was the one thing I really did good at today. Yeah. Cause it's easy falling to bed being like, damn it. I could have done more. I got it by the thing. And then, yep. and that's what keeps you up. Well, you also don't, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you also don't want to get in the habit of like, I didn't make it to those last two things on that list, you know? And then I would internalize that as I failed today. Yeah. And it, that's not the case. It's not how it works. It's not how it works. Yeah. So you gotta, you have to make sure that your focus and where you put your emotion, that accomplishment feeling that you're, you're carefully monitoring where it's at. The three D's, baby. I love the. That is my favorite part of what you described. I, I, I don't get me wrong. I love all of it. I love the entire mini business plan. But particularly, I have I have struggled with that. The damn task that follows you like a like a your shadow from one day to the next to the next, and you, you get I get like frustrated almost moving it from my list from yesterday. Like damn it, yeah. again. And you look back, it's like for weeks. This why, yeah. and I, I never thought about that. Do it, de delete it, delegate it, yeah. and probably a lot of the things that I needed to, to delegate, honestly, yeah. that were important things. I knew I couldn't get rid of them off my list, but I didn't want to do them, yeah. or I wasn't capable. Of it's doing one them. of the hardest ones for me. Yeah. The, like for that's coming, a great of, way coming of age is the delegating one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, like because you inherently think like oh, I'm going to do this. I, I have to be the one to that be, does this. It's upon me. That's how right. we're raised, isn't right. it? Yeah. Right. And that's just not true. If it's up to me, it's up It's up to the people I surround yeah. myself with. My tribe is the one that's moving the needle forward. And delegating is very difficult. But luckily, I'm surrounding myself with people who are much smarter than I am that can do better at those things. Yeah. You know, Alec, can I get your help with this? Pfft, easy. Where I'm like, I can't get it done because it's outside my scope. And not only that, I'm incongruent with it. I, I don't even like doing that kind of a thing. <laughs> but Alec is like totally like, yeah, I do that all the time. I yeah. love that. Scott's a great example. I can hand off to Scott things that are outside my imagining. And he's like, oh, yeah, easy. I've got it. I'm going to dial that in. It's I'll call you back in 20 minutes. 20 seconds. <laughs> do, 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 do. Got it. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. And so that's the secret um, in surrounding yourself, right? Yeah. So the, the, um, the MVP, the last thing that I want to say, when I fold that and I throw it in the trash, there's nobody, as a man, there's no one in my life that's going to every day say, boy, Rob. Yeah. Yeah. Attaboy, you, you fucked today up. You, <laughs> you did it. You, you <laughs> killed it today. No one does that for me. There, I don't have a boss. Yeah. None of us do, ultimately. I mean, we might work for somebody, but there's that boss is, is very rarely going to be like... one boss that's going to do that anyway. And so when I throw that in there, there's a moment of... Boss Rob, that's a hat that I wear, that is like, hell yeah. Today, boom, I got it all done. I got it all done. Mm -hmm. I killed it today. There's days that when I get to the end, there's things that still need to be done on there, and I've got to run through the three Ds, and man, I still need to make those phone calls. Well, all right. Get your ass up and go make the phone calls. You're not going to watch cartoons tonight. It's got to happen. I have to make that phone you call. You just got to watch out that boss Rob doesn't fuck up uh, finance director Rob. Like, God, you're just giving away bonuses left and right, <laughs> yeah, man. What the yeah. fuck? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got to be careful. But the um, but what I'm trying to say is that the do it is, for me, the hard thing. I'll get to the end of the day where there's no gas left in the tank, and I have to. It's on my list. This has to get done today. And I, I get myself up, and I go do it. Yeah. I go do it. And in so doing, um, in doing it, um, I am creating a discipline or an accountability with myself. I am not letting Rob down. Yeah. I was just about to say, how can you, how can other people expect you to keep promises to them if you aren't keeping promises to yourself? Now, when I've explained this, I explain this like nugget to you guys, but I want you to know if you've been around me again for more than a few minutes, you have thought to yourself, I would like to think, how's he, how's he doing that? How's he getting so much done? This is how I do it. This is how I'm getting more done. This is how I can have a, a charity and a business and a family and all of these things because I'm super intentional about the activity and the doing of it. And I'm going f more quickly from one non-negotiable necessary thing that happens today to the next. I'm not spending time on Facebook or Instagram or 
if I'm supposed to be on Facebook or Instagram, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing on Facebook or Instagram. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's intentional living. That is something that so I think social media managers struggle with. I, I myself personally have struggled with as a, someone who's been doing social media management since 2016 or 2015. It, it's really hard to stay on task. Yeah. The entire purpose of the platform is to get you off task. Yes. It's to keep you in it. Yeah. Even even in the meta suite, even in the business side of things, it's it's. Uh, did you check your? Did you check yeah. this thing? One did more you, thing. Oh, look, one more thing. Oh, there's a little notification up yep. here. Did you want to? Do, oh, look, there's a bonus. If you spend twenty dollars, you get fifty dollars in ad spent. Like so many things yeah. that they're trying to throw you off with. So what I would recommend in that, because I'm in the same, I'm in the fireman business. Like everything that I'm doing, I'm going to put out this fire, yep. to put out this fire. I use an egg timer, very old school. I, yeah, I and that. I set the timer for the amount of time dedicated to this task. And when it gets to the end of that task, ding. And I'm like, huh, I, I just screwed that whole time away. I just, I, it happens. You get sucked into yep. the vortex. But I, I am intentionally checking in on my time. I have a time tracker that I do once a quarter that I have to write down every 15 minutes what I've been doing for a week. Try that. I'd love to share it with you. You, it's you tough, want to, but... it is hard. And the thing is, is that you realize that I am wasting a ton of time watching television or talking to people about stuff that has nothing to do with anything. I'm, right. I'm walking around the office and I'm wasting their time. I'm wasting my time. This 15 minute, it just is a great time tune up. And I talk about a lot of these things and it seems kind of like nonsense, but this is the only time that I get to be Rob. This is it. I only have so many minutes in a day. And I have to do my job better than my competition or I won't get paid. I've got to have more time so that I can dedicate it to the charity because when I go home, I want to be home. I have to be very, very intentional about everything that I do because I just don't have time to mess around. Yeah. But then the other side is, is that my personal time is also just as sacred. It's mm-hmm. sacred time. If it's time for me to be out in the hammock reading my book, all of the things on my list are done. I've done them. I get a reward myself. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm going to be in my hammock, hammock, like reading and thinking, oh man, I should have answered that email. I should have called Jared. Back. Or you hear the ding. In the yeah. Dish. Yeah. What mm-hmm. if that's the thing? So what I'm trying to do in this intentional living isn't to try to cram more garbage into my life. It's to cram more quality into, the, into my life. I want you guys to be clear about that. My job isn't to fill my life, my MVP full of stuff that has to be done. It's things I get to do. I want to do them at the highest level. And then I want to take the time and do whatever I want with whomever I want wherever I want. And that is called a fulfilling life. Yeah. So if you're not doing that, you're going to spend your whole day. Um, what's that principle where they talk about like most of the people, if you're going on vacation on Wednesday, you get everything done for the week on Monday and Tuesday, everything, everything's done. You've crammed it all into two days. You're highly effective. Now, if we could think that way all the time and be highly effective five days out of the week, yeah. What else could we accomplish in our lives? And so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to implement that pre-vacation mindset. Hmm. Hmm. I like that. I think a lot of people who are in my generation that's now kind of phasing into the the into a profession, whatever it may be, I think there's a, a really bad mentality going around of like, oh, I did that so efficiently and now I can take this. this. Now it's like I've... I've built myself in the slack time, but you're, then you're kind of just furthering your, your own struggles down the road, right? If you're not right. utilizing that time for the next thing and then filling in the next thing, then you're just saving that to be an issue for yourself down the road. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Choosing your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Back to, I, I love the logical flow Thank of you. this. This is like a, this is a Boy. novel that I would read <laughs> <laughs> the way, you know, the, the, the value or the impact that you can have and the the uh, value can, you can extract only can happen in the here and now and so you you have created a system of of your own life that supports extracting maximum value from the here and now yes amen yeah thank that's you brilliant i just found a t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> oh man well and that's i mean it, the the last insight that I will, will give from this uh, this book that I'm reading is that uh, the author said, life, the world is your classroom and people are your lessons. And I think that's a really important thing to, to look to you and, and understand that you have d- developed this with a great amount of, of 
hardship. This took. This was not something that just came to you overnight. This is experience playing itself out on on this page that I'm taking notes on, and so it's it's about me understanding that there's value here that I that I need to be paying attention to this lesson. I'm in class right now and ah, I'm getting the lesson. I love that. Yeah.